and in our init event attributes let's set that vim file Ah, oh, what am I doing? Come on. Vim file to null. Alright, we're going to copy this and we're going to go back down to our add Vim file to cache. Once we've added the Vim file to the cache, here, once we've created this and then added it to, to the cache, this is very important. We need to set the vim the vim file to null again very important set the vim file to null again so that when the user clicks add file what we're going to do is well add file to vim cache what we're going to do is uh we actually need to check if the vim file not the vim name not not what not not what not the text that you're seeing in there but the actual vim file that that's uh that's in the background we need to check if that vim file actually exists so uh inside here actually just wrap all of this around here even before doing all of this thing checking before the for loop we're gonna say if vim file equals equals null and wrap everything sorry is not equal to null and we're gonna wrap everything all of it even the j option pane in this if block so we're gonna do this if the vim file is not null else the vim file is null and what we're going to do is and this should never happen you know this should never happen but just in the case it happens which it never should we're just going to prompt the user to try again open up to a uh, uh, we're gonna say something went wrong something went wrong please and again this should never happen but it's, you know just in the case that it does happen we don't want the user scratching his head and saying well, well I added it why is it not working you know just in the case and again this should never happen but just you know in the off chance that we missed something might as well add it in here we want to test for as many cases as possible so please click browse again and please click browse again and choose your file and again this should never happen but I keep saying it over and over again All right, control shift F alright now if we run our application everything should be a-okay enter ISBN 1 2 3 title me author you Priceless. Oh. Oh. Same thing, priceless. Add new file. Oh, and we're actually not done yet. Right, one, two, three already exist. Four. You see, we can keep. Ah, oh. not done yet, guys. We're not done yet. Once we add book to library and it's succeeded, we need to clear all these fields. We need to clear them out. Damn it. I thought we were done. You thought we were done. I told you guys we weren't done. I told you, but you wouldn't listen to me. 
so add vim files in vim cache okay I'm gonna go here and once everything is added you've add, appended that we're just gonna clear out all the fields and you know what I'm just gonna copy that and paste it here delete this that that and that put semicolons here here and here instead of content equals delete the trim and just actually from here up to here set text so copy this from here to here and please follow along with me guys we're just setting the text to an empty string. That's all we're doing. All right, that's it. And I know we could create a method for this. We could put this in a method like uh, clear all fields, but uh, let's put it in here. Let's not make things complicated, more complicated than it already is. So now, if we run our application. clears out the fields. Now let's actually try adding a sound file. So browse, music, with you. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, add file to the book, brown with you, mp3 has been added to the, is ready to be added to book. Now, again, I didn't set this to the optional. Ah. So let's go back to add file to book. I mean, add file to Vim cache. And set text is not supposed to be that, it's supposed to be optional. <laughs> 